Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to model a traffic cone in Autodesk Fusion 360. Now the first thing we want to do is look at our part from the top. So let's come over here to our view cube and click on top. We're now looking at the top of our part. Let's come over here to where it says origin, click on the arrow, and let's select the plane that corresponds to the top, which is the XZ plane. Let's start a new sketch and come down to the Create tab, come to Rectangle and Center Rectangle. Click on the origin to place the center rectangle and drag it out to a dis distance of 14.175 inches and hit Enter. Now from here, we can set another dimension, click on this line, drag it out, and if I click on the first dimension, that's going to automatically link these two dimensions. So hit enter. And from here, we want to add a couple of fillets inside of our sketch. So let's come over here to fillet, click on it. Now select this line and this line, as well as this line and this line, this line and this line, and the last two lines. Now, right now, it says 90 millimeters. If we type in 40, we're going to see fillets that look a little bit more realistic. So let's hit Enter. And as you can see, uh, this is around the shape of what we want. So let's finish our sketch. And if we rotate this again by clicking on the edge of our view cube, we can come over to Extrude. And we want this to be 0.85 inches. And if you see in this window, the taper angle should be about 3 degrees. So type in 3 and negative. And if we look at this from the front, you can see that the taper angle is, uh, has come into our part. So we're going to hit OK. And we now have, if we use our view cube to rotate around, our part. Now I'm going to click on this back face or the bottom face and I'm going to click here to create a sketch here. I'm now creating a sketch on this face. So I'm going to click on create and I'm going to come down to my uh, slot right here and I'm going to select center point slot and for right now I'm just going to place this kind of randomly and I can come in here and set some dimensions. So let me set a very basic dimension of the dotted line. I'm going to make it uh, 60 millimeters for right now. And let me set a dimension here for the distance between these two lines to be about uh, 25 millimeters. And I can continue to manipulate this and kind of size it out the way I see fit make this maybe 30 millimeters and you can see over here there's this what's called a constraint so maybe you've seen this before um, this constraint that's vertical it's basically these two little lines if you click on this little icon and hit delete on your keyboard it'll delete that constraint so now I can rotate this at will and I can rotate it to where I want it to go so what I want to do from here is I want to come up to line, click on the origin, and drag up. Now I can come to sketch dimension, click on this line, and click on the line I made from the origin, drag up, and type in 45. I now have a 45 degree slot. Now I want to control this slot a little bit better. So I'm going to click on line, click on this point, click on the origin, and I'm going to select these two lines and I'm going to make them collinear. So now I have a slot that's dimensioned with an angle as well as with a point connected to the origin. So from here I'm going to click on this line right here and I'm going to come over here to the right side and click on construction this little button and that's going to make that a construction line meaning that it's just a line 
for um, dimensioning and that type of thing. It's not a line that's going to come up in our features, which we'll see later. So let me click on sketch dimension again and set a dimension on this line. And I'm just going to place down the dimension that has been pre-selected for me, whatever that distance is. And all of my sketches come up in black. That means that they're fully constrained. That means that I can't click on, on any part of this sketch and move it around because there are dimensions describing every aspect of it. So from here, what I wanna do is hit Finish Sketch and I'm gonna click on Extrude and I'm gonna select the slot and if I rotate this again, I can drag this out. And in this little window here, I can type in 0.65. And if I look at this right from the front, and 0.65 inches, I can hit OK. And now I see that it's been engendered. And I kind of like this shape. I, I think it's, it's going to be good for what we need here. So what I want to do is I want to create a pattern. So let me come down to create. And I'm going to come down to um, circular pattern. But first, I'm going to have to figure out what axis runs through this part. So let's look at this from the front and we could see that the Y axis is right there on the center. That's the axis that we're going to use for our rotation. So come down to create. And if you come down to pattern again, click circular pattern. And we're going to come down here to where it says features because we're selecting this feature and click on axis and click on Y. And that's going to pattern our selection. Now if I type in four, you're going to see that it evenly distributes these. If you type a higher value, it, it may not work out because they're, they're coming off of the parts. So we want to leave this at four and we're going to hit OK. And as you can see, we have our four uh, dimples on the bottom, which are going to uh, be ben a bit beneficial for this uh, part design. So uh, from here, Let's come up here to the top, click on it, and create sketch. Now let's click on center diameter circle, click on the origin, and drag this out. And we want this to be 10.5 inches. And let's look at it from the front. And you, can, if you hit E on your keyboard, the E button, you can click on the circle and drag it up. And we want to drag this up to be about, let's say, 26 inches. I'm going to 26 IN for inches. And as you can see, this is not the shape of a traffic cone. Uh, we actually want to create a large taper here. So if I click on this, right click on this feature down here in this feature tree, if, if you see what I'm, what I'm looking at, right click, edit feature. And the taper angle, if we type in five, you're gonna see that it, it comes outward. So put a negative in front of that value, and you're gonna see that it's kind of coming inward. Now, the higher the value, the smaller it's gonna get at the top. Now, we're just gonna hit okay for now, and if we click on our top circle, it's gonna give us the radius for it automatically. So what we wanna do from here is uh, we wanna change this uh, unit uh, to be a little bit less. So right now it's 40 millimeters. And uh, what we want to change it to is about um, maybe about 35 total. So we're going to click on this feature here on the bottom tree, edit feature. And we're going to increase this angle by a little bit. So we're going to make it negative 9 degrees or in maybe negative 8.5 and we're gonna hit OK. And from here, what we wanna do is we want to uh, create a couple of stripes here. So let's click on XY for the XY plane. We're gonna create a sketch here. And 
And within this new sketch, let's create a couple lines. So come up here to line and let's drag out a couple lines that are all connected. Come down, across, and then down and across again. And the first thing we want to do is set a dimension between the top of the cone and this line. So just click on the top line here and this line. And this is going to be 3.75 inches. And the dimension between this is going to be 6.5 inches. So 6.5 IN. And between here and here is going to be 2 inches. Sorry, 2 inches, 2 IN. And the dimension between uh, this line and this line is going to be 4.5 inches. Now with that newly created line, uh, we're going to use this to split our part. So hit Finish Sketch. And now let's come to Modify. Click on the Modify tab and come down to split face and we're going to select this whole face for faces to split and our splitting tool is going to be this line and with everything selected by default we're just going to hit OK after the split has been created what we want to do is come over here to our planes again and we're going to select this YZ plane which comes up here and we're going to create a sketch and before we go any further, let's switch up here to Tools, click on Tools, and click on Section Analysis. Once you have Section Analysis selected, come back to YZ and click on it. And that's going to cut your part right in half. So hit OK. And with your part cut in half, you can now uh, work a little bit smarter uh, in the next thing we're going to do here. So uh, let's come here to Line, and we're going to drag out a line and I'm going to come down to create and I'm going to come to where it says project slash include click on project and I just want to project uh, this uh, sort of uh, face right here so hit OK and it's going to project uh, these two lines but what I really want to do is create a line between this point and this point now I'm going to click on this line and I'm going to come over here to where it says construction and make it a construction line. So now I can set a, di a dimension between these two or rather a constraint be between these two. So I want to click on this line and this line, come up here to constraints and click on parallel and now the lines are parallel to each other. So when I set a dimension between these two, I can set a dimension to be let's say um, 0.2 inches we can always change it if we need to maybe we want to bump this up um, to 0.25 inches and after that's been created um, what we want to do is drag this line down a little bit and this is going to be used in our cut so we're going to create another line drag it out, bring it to about here, and we're going to bring this up um, past this point and come across and come down and come across again. And you're going to see why in a minute. Um, take this point and this point, and if you hold down shift and select both of them, you can click on coincident to make them touch. And if you drag this up um, to a spot underneath this line, then um, that's, that's what we're going to have to have here. So um, just to make it a little bit easier to see, uh, this is about what it should look like. Obviously, you're going to have uh, the rest of your lines here too. So if I select all of it, it's going to look something like this. And we just want to be sure that the dimension between this line and this line is the same as this dimension. So let me come over to sketch dimension, click on this line, click on this line, drag out, and select this dimension right here, and that's going to link the two values automatically. 
So from here, uh, we have our shape that we're gonna use for our revolve. So come up here and hit Finish Sketch, and come back to Solid, click on Revolve, and for Profile, we're gonna select these four profiles, and for Axis, we're gonna select this line, which is the axis of rotation, and we're gonna make sure Cut is selected, and we're gonna hit OK. And as you can see, um, it's done our revolution. Now it's a little uneven, so that means that there's something wrong here with um, our feature. So that's okay, we can investigate by right clicking on our sketch. So click Edit Sketch. And what we can see here is that our axis is not on the origin. That's the problem. So click on the origin, hold down shift, and click on this line, and make them coincident with each other. Now, when we finish the sketch, it's gonna update accordingly, and everything is lined up. So from here, we just wanna add a couple finishing features. Let's come up to tools, and let's click on section analysis to get out of the section, or actually, I'm sorry, um, the way to get out of it is to come over here to analysis, right click on section one and click delete and that's going to get us out of that analysis and if we come up here to our view cube and click on the edge we can look at this from this angle come here to solid and click on this tool called fillet and if you click on this edge and drag the arrow up we can make this uh, about 25 millimeters and hit ok and we're gonna do the same thing for a couple other edges here. So click on fill it again, and click on this edge. And we're going to make this um, one millimeter. We're also going to set this bottom edge to be a millimeter as well. So it may be a little hard to select. If you need to, you can click on orbit, and you can orbit your part around to make it a little bit easier to select. So come back to fill it, click on this series of edges, one millimeter, hit enter. And you can do this for the top as well. So we're gonna come here to the top and we're going to create a fillet here, of course. And we can make this whatever dimension we want. I'm gonna set it to be five. I'm also gonna set the inside to be um, a dimension, but less than five. So going to make this five, hit enter, and let's do a couple fillets on these inside edges. I'm going to type in one millimeter, and that looks fine to me. And so that's uh, pretty much it. We're going to add a fillet here to this bottom. And you can set these to be really whatever dimension you want within reason. I'm going to make this 10 millimeters and we're gonna set dimensions on these fill on these uh, slots. And I'm gonna make this two millimeters. And there we have our traffic cone.